Wow, thank you. My name is Jim Plott. I'm with Merit Consulting, so I'm your neutral facilitator tonight. My role and goal is to uh, ensure we have a good meeting. The uh, meeting agenda is pretty straightforward. We're going to have a presentation. The words of welcome from the local councillor and from the local MVP. But we're going to have a presentation to provide you an overview of uh, the project. And then there will be plenty of time following that. And there's staff from uh, both Metrolinx, TTC, the city planning. There's staff from all the different disciplines as well as the consulting teams and the engineers to help you with your questions at the different panels and at the boards and the maps. So there will be plenty of time. We really want you to uh, pour over the maps and provide us with that information. Uh, but we'll start with uh, Councillor Fletcher, Ward 30, as she can say a few words of welcome. 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 Welcome, everybody. Uh, I don't know if Councillor Fregadagnes is coming, but we have a very mutual interest in the relief line and in making sure that there's a very robust consultation. And a number of years ago, the City Council moved the relief line, oh, there she comes now, moved the relief line from project number 15 with the city and the province, or Metro Links, and we moved it into the top five. In other words, we moved it up to be fast-tracked, if I can say that, and to tell Metro Links in the province that we have a very big overcrowding problem at Young and Bloor, and on the Bloor line, and we need some relief from congestion. Because those of you who travel by transit know that congestion means overcrowding on all of the subway cars. So this initially was not going to be such a robust consultation. I hope you think that it's a good one. I think it's a very worthwhile and strong consultation. But with Councillor Fragadakis, myself, and Councillor McConnell, in whose wards the relief line part one would run, we insisted that we have a strong, engaged, multi-faceted um, consultation, which looked at a number of options. And I think you'll find that here tonight. So I just want to thank everybody very much for your participation, very important. And how many of you have been to these consultations before on the relief line? How many this is your first? Oh, quite a few who are here for the first time. So um, this has been going along for a while. It's great to have you here. And for those of you who have been along for the ride, so to speak, I think you'll see that this is developing very nicely and coming up to a preferred option. This, I believe, is not a, it's a transit EA, am I right? Which means that the TTC gets to decide on its own environmental assessment. So it doesn't go to the province for approval, which is why we insisted that it be done very, very front end loaded, so that when we get to a conclusion, we can all be very satisfied that it's the correct one and that when they move ahead alone, that they have the backing of the community. Unlike the Leslie Barnes, but they didn't have the backing of the community. So out of that experience, we have a new experience. Thank you very much for being here. I think probably Councilor Fregada has one. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Paula. Good evening, everyone. It's nice to see everybody here again on a much warmer day than the last time we met at the Calvary Church, where I think there was a nice storm and there were power outages all across town. Um, I don't want to repeat everything that's already been said and take away from uh, uh, you know proceeding with the consultation, but I'm really excited that that, uh, that we're involved in, in such a consultation because there's nothing that I hear more of in addition to like um, the fact that the, you know people are speeding through our neighborhoods and we need to do more about traffic calming than that we need to address the transit issues in our community. And for those of us who either catch the train and um, Pape or Chester or Broadview um, and find that four trains pass us by on our way to work in the morning, um, having a conversation about the downtown relief line is a really important conversation um, because um, you know, what makes it even more important when we have discussions around the building of um, Scarborough subway, um, which will suggest that uh, people at the end of the line and from Durham perhaps will jam up the, the trains uh, in the East End, and by the time they get to us, uh, we won't be able to get on. Uh, so this is a very important conversation and, and looking at all the possibilities and, and where this um, could be aligned, uh, what makes the most sense, and, and uh, 
has the greatest impact um, for the most people. So uh, I'm looking forward to the outcomes of this and to hearing your thoughts this evening and over the course of the entire consultation. So I'll turn it over to Jim, um, who will- I appreciate the role of the city councillors in pushing to see that it was a thorough one. The decisions that are gonna be made will affect us for generations to come. We're talking about spending billions of dollars. The only way that that can be done intelligently is with a deep consultation with the community. So I wanna thank all of you for being out here. Without you being here, Metrolink's TTC aren't going to have the guidance that they need to carry this project forward. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we are going to have a short presentation. I just want to introduce the key folks from the City Planning Department. We have Tim Alaska, who is the Director of Transportation Planning with the Planning Division of the City. Stella Gupteson is going to do the presentation. Next. She is one of the key architects of this. And Paul Mollett, where's Paul? He's at the back, he's with TTC. We also have uh, folks from Metrolinx, and there will be some presentation items on what other consultations are happening here tonight on regional express rail and smart track. But without further ado, there, so please hold your questions. There will be a short time for questions and clarification following the presentation. So uh, just hold your questions. We'll have some uh, a period of time for questions before we turn you back over to the maps and the boards. So I'll turn it over to Stella. Thanks, Jim. Uh, as the councillors have said, thank you very much for being here. The project team members really appreciate the support and the interest in this project. Uh, I'm going to take an opportunity, I, I think probably the most, most of you are here with an interest in the relief line, but I'm gonna just take a few minutes to talk about how transit planning is coordinated uh, with Metrolinx, the TTC, and city planning, and then go over very briefly some of the other key transit projects that we're working on right now and then spend the bulk of the time, uh, maybe about 15, 20 minutes or so, just going over the really fine project assessment process. So why are we here tonight? Good question. We really want to hear from you. Your input is so helpful for us, combined with the technical analysis as we put our recommendations forward to City Council, which we're planning to do by the end of, before the end of the year. So to have your input, it really helps us build a balance and make more informed decisions and help the decision making process. So there's many opportunities to provide your input tonight. First of all, you can speak to any of the members of the project team, of which there are many in the room. You can, uh, you can take the opportunity to write stickies, put up dots on any of these panels here on our website. There's also uh, opportunities to review information and uh, provide comments. And in the other room, we have uh, panels and project team members from the Scarborough Subway Extension Project Assessment, as well as the uh, Regional Relief, uh, Regional Express Rail with Metrolinx and Smart Track. So, as you're probably aware, right now in the city of Toronto and in the region, there's more transit investment going on today than probably at any time in the city's history. So it's a very important time for us to coordinate closely with our colleagues at Metrolink and TTC to make sure that we're, we're taking a big picture into account and doing good network planning for transit improvements. So the, the projects that we're here to talk to you about tonight, the, major, the four major initiatives are Regional Express Rail, or RER, Smart Track, especially the uh, Eglinton West Feasibility Study, Scarborough Subway Extension, and the Relief Line. There's a number of other projects that you're aware of uh, are currently under construction, including the Eglinton Crosstown LRT, the Finch LRT, and the uh, Spadina Extension North. So just to give you a bit of a visual overview, so the green lines on this map uh, represent the GO corridors, and those are the corridors where Regional Express Rail, RAR, will be implemented. Then the black line is Smart Track, which takes, uh, it addresses three of the RIR corridors. The uh, Scarborough Subway Extension in the Far East, uh, that's the uh, Scarborough Extension Study. Then the Relief, relief Line is uh, in the orange shaded area in the downtown area. And then the Feasibility Study for the uh, Smart Track Edmonton Corridor is in the purple shaded area. So to help us do this in integrated transit planning, we are using a new model that we're currently developing together with the University of Toronto to help us. It's a bit more robust and more updated 
uh, compared to the model we've been using in the past. So we're anticipating results, draft results from that model coming out in June, and then it'll help us do further analysis on our projects through the summer. So our timing, so we're here today, uh, and for the next two weeks, we've got a total of eight public meetings uh, on, on these studies that I've been mentioning. And then over the summer, we'll be con continuing to do our technical analysis as well as the modeling. And in the fall, uh, we'll, we'll I should have mentioned in September, we're anticipating coming back to the community again with updates from our technical analysis and the modeling. And then in the fall, we're going to be reporting to uh, city uh, committee as well as council on the results of our public consultations. So I'm going to provide just a brief overview of the studies that are being conducted by Metrolink's TTC and city planning. First of all, the RER of GO Regional Express Rail, over the next 10 years, Metrolinks will be uh, making improvements to the GO lines, including 15-minute service, two-way all day, on, on seven of the GO, GO lines. And what this will essentially mean is that it's going to be uh, noticeably improved service, and it'll get people where they need to go faster. Now, Smart Track and RER have a lot of uh, things in common. The thing that distinguishes Smart Track really is that uh, first, it, it would have more stations. Secondly, uh, the TTC fare option, so people wouldn't need to pay dual fares, as well as um, uh, uh, stations, yeah, more stations along the road corridors. So City Council has directed staff to evaluate the Smart Track concept and to conduct a feasibility study on the uh, Eglinton West portion of the corridor. So we're to report back to council on uh, some feasible options there. So what that will entail is that there will be a connection provided uh, from the Kitchener Go line to the Mississauga Airport Corporate Center. And there are three options that are currently being evaluated and I'll, I'll uh, highlight those in a minute. So the first step in this is going to be to conduct a high-level feasibility review of various options to make those connections. So the three quarters that we're currently testing for feasibility would be firstly to uh, provide a continuous heavy rail spur from the Kitchener Go Corridor by way of Eglinton Avenue West. So to run heavy rail down Eglinton all the way to the airport corporate center. The second would be to have a separate heavy rail corridor along Eglinton with a transfer point. So people would get off the go and then get on the uh, Eglinton smart track connection. Thirdly, we're looking at uh, providing a continuous heavy rail connection all the way up uh, further along the, the uh, Kitchener Go line and then coming down into the airport corporate center. So we're gonna be looking at the feasibility of these options from a variety of perspectives including technical, land use, uh, overview of financing options, regulatory, and service. <laughs> so the next project I'm just going to quickly review is the Scarborough subway extension. So uh, this study area basically encompasses the ability to provide an alignment from Kennedy Station up to uh, Shepherd Avenue with a connection at Scarborough Center. So originally there were nine <coughs> potential corridors that were assessed and that has been shortlisted to three alignments and that information is across the hall in the smaller room. So and the Scarborough team is looking at uh, input from everyone here as well for their existing conditions, but especially on the shortlist of corridors and uh, the preliminary uh, station locations. Okay, so that's just a very high level overview of the other projects. So now I'm gonna spend a little bit more time talking about the relief line. So uh, by show of hands earlier, I, I noticed that there's a lot of folks in the room that it's your first time here. So just wanna remind folks that on our website, there is a lot of background material and there are people in the room who can answer questions. So if, if I kind of skirt through and start in the middle, uh, and if you need more background, feel free to ask. So this project's been underway for um, about a year. 
And uh, the first phase, setting the stage and opportunities for uh, opportunity rationale and the long list of options we've already covered. So today we're at phase three. We're doing a short list of potential corridors. So around the room, what we see here is some existing conditions panels. There's some background on how we got here. And then uh, the evaluation results of the potential station areas. And then our, our, our uh, potential corridors are there. So we're really seeking your input tonight on the evaluation results for the potential corridors as well as on our, on our corridor options. See if we've got it right so far. The primary objective of the, uh, of the regional, of the relief, the relief line project assessment is really to identify a connection between downtown and the Danforth to help relieve congestion on the Young Line, and especially at the Young Moore Station. Um, crowding congestion there has been identified as problematic, and anybody who takes the subway or transit on a regular basis, that's gonna be no surprise to you. <coughs> so the Relief Line project is actually identified in the region's transit, transportation uh, plan called the Big Move. Uh, it is identified as a next wave priority project, although no funding has been committed to date. So the Young Relief Network study and the Relief Line do share a lot of elements in common. They're both aimed at trying to find ways to reduce the congestion and relieve crowding. The uh, Young, Regional, Young Relief Network study is a complementary study being conducted by Metrolinks. Uh, and there's some information at the back if you're interested. Uh, so the relief line project assessment is determining a preferred alignment between downtown and the Danforth, as I mentioned, and the YRNS Metrolinks is examining uh, the need for a relief line more generally and other regional network options to provide relief to the young subway. So the study area for the relief line is basically from downtown to the east and then up to Danforth. Uh, you'll see these extensions kind of going to the west and the, the north. Those have been identified as potential future expansion areas. So as we're going through our work on this study area, we are keeping in mind the importance for being able to extend to the north and to the west. And in fact, when we had our previous consultation with the communities in March, uh, we heard a lot of people expressing a strong desire for, for those connections to occur, so we are definitely keeping those uh, at the top of mind. So as we have gone through this process, the first thing we did, which is perhaps a bit unconventional, is we identified the potential station locations. And the main reason we did that was because, unlike a project like this uh, Scarborough subway extension, where it was already known where it was gonna stop, start and stop, with the uh, relief line project, we really had to examine where is the best place in downtown to make the connection and where is the best place along the Danforth. So we started with identifying, well, what are all the potential station locations that would make sense? And then while we were at it, we also identified key activity centers in between or for potential inline stations, as we call them. So that's the subject of all this evaluation over here. So you'll see a number of stations have risen to the top and they're colored in the green shades. And those are the ones that, through the technical analysis as well as the public input, rose to the top in terms of the, the locations that we thought made the most sense. And namely, that is uh, Cape and uh, Broadview. Uh, but I, I digress a little bit here. So the first thing we did was we identified the potential station areas. We evaluated those. And now we're at the stage of kind of putting pen to paper and based on the evaluation and all the public input, what makes the most sense in terms of a future corridor? A wide, uh, broad study corridor that we should take into the next round as we're identifying uh, unique alignments. And then at the end of this project, we will have identified a preferred alignment in station locations. So the evaluation framework that sets the tone for this is uh, a process that arose through um, the feeling congested project that some of you might have heard of over the last few years. 
So the evaluation process identified that the most important things for transit planning is for transit to serve people, strengthen places, and support prosperity. So we thought this provided a really good place for us to start in identifying the specific criteria and measures that would work for the relief line uh, assessment process. So things like choice, are people able to choose the mode in which they travel? How is it supporting those decisions? Are they having a good customer experience? What about social equity? Are we taking into needs of the broadest possible spectrum of people and communities? Strengthening places, how are these potential stations and alignments and corridors, how do they support uh, strengthening our communities? Healthy neighborhoods, uh, the environment, supporting growth and affordability. So a huge raft of, of uh, criteria, and we have a lot more detail on those who would like to dig into it. There's some, a few copies of the full evaluation criteria available for you, and as well online, I should just mention. So when we met with the communities in March, we heard some very strong messages, and these were actually developed by reading each and every single comment that was made, and these were the top of, top of the, the ones that came to the top in terms of the comments we heard most often. So people clearly stated that the, the relief line needs to be part of an integrated transit network. It can't just be uh, seen as operating on, on its own. We have to integrate it into the existing network for the subways, the streetcars, as well as smart track. How does this relate? And you'll recall I mentioned the modeling exercise we're, we're undertaking right now. That's going to really help us get more information on how these projects are related. So, and as I also mentioned earlier, it's really important for the relief line to be able to extend to the north and to the west. And we heard that loud and clear. Don't tear up Queen and King Street during construction. People think it's still important to be able to take the Queen and King and Queen Streetcar. And we heard that message loud and clear as well. We need to protect our neighborhoods, our parks, and our cultural heritage. And that those are factors that we have integrated into the evaluation criteria. Look for ways that the relief line can provide opportunities for city building and redevelopment. So focus the, the public resort or the private development opportunities to support the public investment. That, that's really important as we go through this exercise. And lastly, the importance of linking key destinations, be it the financial district, St. Lawrence Market, City Hall, Distiller District, uh, uh, you know, just to name a few. Okay, so just to quickly go through the evaluation results. So 45 potential station areas were identified, including stations in downtown, along the Danforth, and the key activity centers in between. So we group them according to these boxes, so downtown, the Danforth, and then the key activity centers. So that the preliminary evaluation has identified those station areas that help achieve the project objectives in the best way possible. And on these panels, those are actually indicated with the green square. And right below that, the, the, uh, the summary of the technical analysis is the summary from our perspective, our understanding of what we heard the community say. And you'll notice that the, there is quite a bit of uh, consistency between the technical analysis and the public input. So that's, that's really helpful. Uh, one of the things that's important to note here is that there are some stations that scored very low, got a red technical score, or even orange, and there are also some stations where we heard from the community serious concerns that they, you know, this station really is not supported by the community. And those red stations, uh, it will, will fall off the table. They will not be pursued. And some of the orange ones as well. So uh, we just want to give the community some reassurance that we did hear what they said. So with respect to downtown, the Bay Street corridor clearly has some benefits in terms of hitting the financial district, providing good service to the, to the financial district. In terms of the east-west opportunities, the Queen uh, Richmond corridor did score high close to employment areas. Uh, the King Wellington corridor also stands out because it is uh, closest to the highest employment density. But really, when you look at it, the King Queen uh, corridors have a lot of commonality. Uh, I would say that, you know, from our perspective right now, there's not one that has the, the strongest. 
So we would really like to hear from you actually as to which of those you think makes most sense. We did hear from people to uh, stay away from Union Station because uh, it's already congested and mostly people who are going to Union from their homes as part of their commute are actually going somewhere else. So Union is kind of an interim step. So we want to actually provide a more direct connection. And that's why you will see on the corridors that Union Station has not resulted in a, a potential connection. So the Danforth subway, the, as I mentioned earlier, the Pape and the Broadview stations uh, stood out as strongest. And that is mainly uh, for making being able to provide connections for people who are using transit. So there's already high ridership going to those stations. There's also a lot of walk-up uh, traffic going to those stations. These um, Pape and Broadview, as some of you are probably aware, are both identified as avenues in the official plan. So uh, there is some future development that is geared to that. So that would help create opportunities for transit uh, supportive development around those locations. And most importantly, probably, is the ability for both Pape and Danforth to offer future connections north. These, uh, using public rights of way, and that some of the other station locations on the Danforth really don't offer that same strong opportunity. So in, in what we heard from the community is actually supportive of that. Pape definitely received the most interest, the strongest support, uh, but Broadview was a close second. So in terms of those inline stations, the activity centers, I'll first cover sort of the east of the non-river area. So uh, some of the activity centers that, uh, from a technical perspective as well as from uh, the public input, Pape and Girard, Girard Square, was seen as having really good potential for future development and it offers connections for multiple uh, transit, existing and future transit routes. <coughs> Queen and Broadview also offers uh, good connections with multiple streetcar routes and would help support redevelopment. So the idea with the relief line is not only to help relieve crowding congestion on the Young subway, but also to see what we can free up in terms of the, um, the surface routes. And uh, some of you may be familiar with a, a fairly significant development proposal on the Unilever lands, where uh, you know they're talking in numbers of jobs from somewhere, you know, 20 to 70,000. It really hasn't kind of firmed up yet. But so we saw the need uh, from a city building perspective to make sure that we're providing an opportunity to have a station in the location. So the Unilever site is uh, included as a potential station area on two of the corridors. Uh, and just to emphasize as well that Queen and Degrassi, Queen and Jones do have some physical constraints and we also did hear from the community that, um, that Queen and Degrassi uh, is problematic. So that's, that's duly noted. So west of the Don River, um, the stations along Sherburn actually all uh, fared quite well in the analysis. There's a, a fair number of people there and jobs there now, as well as uh, uh, good transit connections and you know, a, fair, a good opportunity for future development. Uh, a station at Regent Park would also help address social equity needs and provide better transit service to that community. Front and Cherry uh, serve areas of new development and can provide surface transit connections to the Portland. So there's a whole development uh, uh, plans that are underway now for, for the lands to the south so to the Portland, so we want to try to provide connections for that development opportunity as well. So what we heard from the community in terms of east and west of the Non River is uh, that there was broad support for Girard Square as well as the Unilever site. So uh, the technical and the community was in sync on that. Uh, as I've mentioned already a couple of times, not strong support to have a station at Queen and Degrassi. Um, key destinations documented by respondents include Leslieville, Chinatown, the Bridgeport, Bridgepoint Health, and Girard Square. So west of Don River, respondents noted that the relief line could provide opportunities for city building and redevelopment, particularly in areas such as the West Lawn Lines. And we had a lot of people remind us that St. Lawrence Market is an important destination, so 
we have factored that into the evaluation. Okay, so lastly, uh, the potential corridors. So uh, the, the material I just covered on the station location evaluations is something we would really like your feedback on over here. Did we get it right? Did we misunderstand something? What do you think? So uh, if you could take a few minutes and you give us your thoughts on that, that would be terrific. So the potential corridors, how did we get to four? Well, basically, we started with the evaluation of the station locations. We determined the best potential connections in the downtown and along the Danforth. And then we identified the best opportunities for future expansion to the west and the north. And then we linked the key activity centers that have the highest potential based on the city building criteria. Another important factor that we have to keep in mind, because we want to minimize property impacts private to pro private property. So we want to stick with public rights of way to the largest degree possible. So uh, that's also factored in in this decision making. And we also need to consider the technical requirements of running a subway. So the uh, radius of the curves, the ability to maintain speeds, um, and track work, etc. And there's folks from TTC around the room who can help with the, the technical information on uh, subway operations. So we have four corridors. So there's two corridors that start in the Queen uh, Richmond area. One goes to Broadview, one goes to Pape. Similarly, there's two that start in the King, uh, King Corridor. One goes to Broadview, one goes to Pape. So these corridors, we have determined, have the highest potential to address the full range of project objectives and city building uh, criteria. So after our, this round of consultation, we will continue with the technical work. We will take into uh, regard everything we hear from, from you, and that will help us choose one preferred corridor that we will then work on with respect to specific alignments. So that will be our next step. So corridor A, it provides service along the Queen Richmond corridor with potentials, potential for inline stations near Broadview Gerard, Regent Park, Queen Sherbert. Now I just want to mention, some of you might look at these maps and think, you know, wow, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six possible stations, you know, five dots on here. It doesn't mean we're going to connect those dots. These are guides, and I like to say that these stations are, are still on wheels. It represents an area, a general area, where we think a station would make sense. And as we go through the detailed technical work, we will start refining those locations. Corridor B goes from uh, Cape to Queen Richmond. So this also provides service along the Queen Richmond corridor with potential stations near Girard, Square, Queen Broadview, the Unilever site, Queen Sumac, Queen Sherburne, uh, and a connection at uh, Danforth Subway at Pate. <coughs> corridor C provides service along the King Wellington corridor with, with potential for inline stations near Broadview and Girard, Queen Broadview, Front Cherry, King Sherburne. And again, the, the Danforth connection would be at Broadview. <coughs> Who, by the way, in this room has participated in the Broadview Avenue study? Is that on anybody's radar? A few folks. We, part, uh, uh, members of our team also work on the Broadview Avenue study. So we're and we have a pile here from uh, Net from the community planning. So we're we're trying to make sure that one hand knows what the other is doing. So that the work we're doing on the relief line and the work that the project team for the Broadview Avenue study that we are coordinated and integrated. So there's going to be a public meeting here. I think uh, in two nights on that, right? So that that'll be something else you can do this week. Did I skip ahead? Okay, so Corridor D provides service along the King Wellington Corridor with stations near uh, Girard, Queen Broadview, Unilever, King Cherry, uh, with a potential Danforth connection at P. So those are the four corridors. Um, there's information about them here, very broad pros and cons, but we have more detailed information for those who would like to dig in a bit on the website, as well as we have a few hard copy handouts available. So uh, we can give you more information on all of this if you would like. 
So uh, next steps. So with the information we gather through this series of consultations in June, we will be selecting a preferred, preferred corridor based on the technical evaluation and public input. We'll develop potential alignments within that preferred corridor. And then uh, when we come back out for, for further consultation in September, you will see, you'll have an opportunity then to review the potential alignment. So we'll be really getting into the fine tuning at that stage. So we hope you'll continue to stay involved. Uh, you can, uh, if you're not already, please get on our mailing list. Anybody here can help you do that. The last day for comments on this phase, phase of work is July the 3rd. Um, so I think that's it. Okay, um, so we have a few minutes for questions. Uh, my colleague uh, Jeff will come to you with a portable mic so we can hear your questions. My other colleague Brody is taking notes. The purpose of the questions is to help you with uh, gaining clarification about something that you're not quite clear on so you can provide us with better comments. The time for providing feedback and comments will be at the boards, on the maps, and in, in the discussion guide that you have. We're not really looking for you to stand up and provide us with feedback. We're looking for questions of clarification. So there's a few hands in the room. So